Okay, so we're still talking about centripetal acceleration, um, and we're going to talk about a propeller, and it's spinning um, on the on the nose of a World War II era fighter plane. So I tried to make a cool picture for you on the fighter planes, like all those old pictures, but we need Matt for that. So it gives us some information. It says that the propeller is 2.3 meters from tip to tip, and it gives us the angular velocity in revolutions per minute. Um, the question asks, what is the angular velocity in radians per second? Um, what is the linear speed, and I'll explain why I put that T in just a second, and what is the centripetal, centripetal acceleration in Gs, in multiples of G? You may have heard people talk about somebody feeling a certain number of Gs, and that's a good sort of unit of acceleration, because we know what acceleration due to gravity is, so Gs, that's a lot of force if you have a lot of Gs. So, the first part of the question says we want to get the angular velocity in radians per second. So, I like to do that right away. I like to get all of my units in what we call MKS, or standard units. So, I went ahead and did that, so you get 125 radians per second. Then, I put a VT. One of the ways that we talk about linear velocity of, of, of something that's moving in a circle is its tangential velocity. If you think about, that's the, that's the tangent to the circle that it's moving in. So that's why I put VT, so you might see that a few times. Um, so the linear velocity is the angular velocity times the radius. We know that if this is 2.3 meters and it's the whole propeller, one of them is 1.15 meters. So we figure out this 125, it was actually 125.7 radians per second times 1.15 meters, and you get that the actual tangential velocity is 144.5 meters per second. So we know this is 125.7 radians per second, and this is 144.5 meters per second. Then we're asked to find the centripetal acceleration of, the, of a point on the tip of the propeller. So we use our centripetal acceleration formula, but I wanted to point out that you, there are actually two of them. If you know the angular velocity, you can get the centripetal acceleration, but since I had just figured out the linear velocity and it was already in my calculator and I'm a little lazy, I just hit squared and divided by our radius, which is 1.15 meters, and then you get that the centripetal acceleration is crazy huge. It's 18,160 meters per second, which is about 1,800 Gs. So if you were sitting on the end of that propeller, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you were, you would be feeling 1,800 Gs on you. That's pretty crazy. So we'll write this down here. And that is how to talk about centripetal acceleration and linear quantities and rotational quantities in the same sort of problem. So I hope that helps you with some of your problems. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.